Hey, what's up everybody? So today we're gonna do a bit of a tour of my bookshelf because, I mean, personally, I don't know if it's that exciting, but a few people have asked me, like like now, like a, a good handful of people have, have messaged me saying that they would be interested to see what books I actually have on my shelf. So I thought I'd give you a tour of my bookshelves and at the same time, I'll kind of, um, introduce some of the books I guess that are kind of mean something to me or you know that I have really enjoyed along the way um, so yeah this is my bookshelves I guess So when it comes to my fiction, probably one of the first things you're gonna notice looking at this shelf is that it jumps from pretty crazy stuff. So I have like the kind of classics, like the Hemingway's Killer Bot to Kill a Mockingbird. Got some Shakespeare up here, quite a bit of Shakespeare in fact. And then it jumps to things like, do ants have assholes? My fiction is completely all over the place. I, I never really, I don't read a lot of fiction, to be honest. I, I mean, I read some, but but not as much as I used to. So it's kind of all over the place. I kind of have like my authors that I'm really into and everything else just kind of falls by the wayside a little bit. So if we start right up at the top, we've got David Mitchell, all my David Mitchell books. He's probably one of my favorite writers around right now who's kind of currently writing. Often when David Mitchell gets bought up, these are the two books that are going to come up the most. Uh, Cloud Atlas, it was made into a film, so I think that's probably why. And then Ghostwritten is sort of like technically a brilliant book. But for me, these are not my favourite David Mitchell books at all. Number Nine Dream, now this one is my favourite David Mitchell book. This one is an incredible book. I've bought this book about five times, I think, because every time I lend it out, I just never really expect to get it back, so I just buy it again. I say I think this is pretty much like the fifth time I've bought this book. Uh, it, it's just an incredible book. What I really like about this is that it's um, a really simple story. It, 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 it's this mad surrealism, and, and it's written in this crazy style, but in fact when you boil it right down it's a really basic story it reminds me a little bit of like a kind of cyberpunk catcher in the rye almost i write dark histories obviously but i am writing a novel like a fiction novel as well have been for years and this is one of the biggest influences on my writing um of that book i would say so moving swiftly on from that we've got like murakami's um you know murakami these days i guess he's kind of it's been appropriated by the hipsters in a lot of a lot of sense, um, but the quality is there. I mean, he's a genius writer. For the record, I got into Murakami years back, so all the hipsters can do one. After that, I've, I mean, it goes from like so such random stuff. I mean, I have like Jack Kerouac on the road. Now to said by Stuart David, he's the bass player from Bell and Sebastian, um, and this was his first book, and it's really, really good. Susan Hill, The Woman in Black, that's classic horror. Alex Garland, The Beach, really dark and really good. Uh, I remember when I read this, I was on a bus, and I was so engrossed in it that I was just having to stand up and get off the bus and read the book at the same time, because I couldn't put it down for two seconds to get off the bus you know and look where I was going I got another Alex Garland book uh, The Tesseract it's not as good I don't think um, The Beach was brilliant this book is, is no, this book is really funny I'm going to have to show you this so this book is like Enid Blyton Mystery and Adventure this is when, when I was a child right like This is, I, I bought this when I was a kid when I was a kid I wrote my address and my phone number and my name on the inside of my books 
carrying on then. Uh, I got some Japanese Harry Potter books um, written in, if anyone's interested in those, because I guess they're kind of an obscurity, because they read backwards. Uh, they read backwards and you read them top to bottom, left to right. Uh, it, yeah, that's the Philosopher's Stone. I don't, I don't actually have them all. I, I only have, oh, this is actually Prison of Azkaban. Um, and Philosopher's Stone, but I only have those two in Japanese. Um, Ichiku Hachion, uh, uh, which was the most recent Murakami, I got those in Japanese as well, um, although I can't actually read these ones. I can read these, these are okay. Harry Potter is basic. I, I can't read this, it's way too hard. Kazushiguro, The Mains of the Day, a fantastic book. Gilbert Grape, I'll see you in Gilbert Grape, great film, great book. Um, yeah, I mean, it, Talented Mr. Ripley, another great film, great book. There, there's some random stuff here, I mean, like The Visitor's Guide to Iceland from like 1970, do you know what I mean? I have some really random stuff up here, but at the same time, then it jumps to like, you know, Wilfred Owen. So, it, it's it's all over the place, really. Um, you know, moving over here, we've got Ian Banks, Walking on Glass, that's a really good Ian Banks book. A load of Shakespeare, this book is really important to me. Uh, I'll pull this one out. So this book is, is super important to me. This book is um, written by a really good friend of mine and we wrote together back when I was like 17 or 18 years old. He was about 10 years older than me. And we used to write and give each other our writing and like kind of, I suppose, critique each other's writing or just help each other out and just sort of say what we liked or what we didn't like about it. Um, I read this book about a million times before we finally got published in about a million different kind of iterations but when he finally got it published he was like oh I'll give you a copy of my book and I was like no you won't I'm gonna go to the shop and buy it and I, I went to uh, well, Borders actually um, like a physical bookshop this is cause it's quite going back quite a way I guess and I, I bought it off the shelf and it was one of the proudest things ever, like, you know, to buy one of my best friend's books. You know, because we'd been kind of writing for a long time, uh, sort of backwards and forwards with these kind of short stories. We would say to each other, like, we would set kind of, oh, this is the subject. And then we could interpret that in any way we like and write a short story and then we would critique it and stuff. Uh, and you know to finally see him get published because he tried really hard I mean I ne I've never tried to get published I'm not that interested but he tried really hard to get this published and it took him a long time and he finally did um, so this is one of the proudest books I own and it's one of my favorite books just for the record I actually made these shelves out of a futon it was a futon that I didn't use anymore so I cut it all up and turned it into bookshelves Pretty handy, eh? I did do it. My dad did it. <laughs> so just wrapping up fiction up here then, I guess. Uh, yeah, we've got Gabriel Garcia Marquez, genius. Uh, a bit more Murakami, Edgar Allan Poe, Honey and Co recipe book. Some more Murakami, some Harry Potters. These are actually the only Harry Potter books I own now because I don't want to have Harry Potter books. I say that, I've got the illustrated ones down there, but these are the only kind of like readable Harry Potter books I've got. Um, and then it goes actually, this bit, this this corner here is slightly weird. This is more music stuff. From here onwards is music. Kinks, Mark Radcliffe, Nick Drake biography, uh, Joe Boyd's biography, who's the, he was Island Records at the same time as Nick Drake. Uh, Factory Records uh, from Manchester, it's like Joy Division. Uh, I, all that kind of Manchester early 90s baggy stuff um, Touching from a Distance that, that's a, another Joy Division book Jack Rock Sampler this is a cracking book this is a really incredible book I, I don't want to get it out because I don't want to disturb Mr Bean there but um, Our Band Could Be Your Life by Michael Azarad if you're into post-punk American post-punk from the 80s this is amazing every chapter is like a different band and it goes from like Fugazi Sonic Youth Butthole Surfers, Black Flag, all that stuff. Amazing book. Uh, yeah, otherwise, that's kind of it for, you know, um, fiction, 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 more fiction. You know, just a bit more Bukowski, Orwell, Machiavelli, Hemingway. I mean, I, I, Farewell to Arms is great. The Old Man and the City is really great. 
Hemingway in general is just really great, right? Francois Sargon, Bonjour Tristesse, that's a great book. Um, or, or kind of novella that's kind of lesser well known, but really good. Uh, Evelyn Moore, Handful of Dust, one of my favourite books of all time. I used to be really into fiction when I was younger. Um, but these days, I, I just don't get the time to read it so much. Like, if I'm reading, I, I'm almost always reading for dark histories. I, I have to read, like, every, two or three books every couple of weeks for each episode. Um, not always all the way through. Sometimes it's just, like, specific parts. Um, but basically, yeah, I find these days, I just don't really have the time for a lot of the fiction. Um, but I, 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 I do enjoy it, but so I think that's kind of why my fiction section is kind of like all over the place because it's just um, I, I haven't really read much or, or like had the time to read much recently, so I just haven't been buying fiction for a really long time. I think the, the most recent book that I bought out of all of that was um, Kazuo Ishiguro, um, Remains of the Day. But yeah, moving on, I guess. So now we're kind of come down a step. This is probably the shelves that are going to be more interesting for Dark Histories people. Um, basically from like this section, uh, from like here up to like here is my non-fiction um, stuff. And, and, and this bit here in particular is kind of my Dark history stuff. This section here is, is less dark histories and more just social history. Some of it's from when I was at university. Um, so like uh, the history of the Middle Ages, that's not, that's just mine. Um, but the Cambridge Social History of Britain, um, that, that they were university, imperial and oriental, imperialism and orientalism, that was a university textbook. Campus Japan, now this is an incredible book. This man and this book is incredible. And it's written by Engelbert uh, Kempfer. He, he, he got the opportunity to actually go inside Japan. And um, he wrote this book about basically his observations about what he saw whilst he was there. And it goes from literally the smallest details, like every aspect of life that he saw from just, it's just, probably one of the most important Japanese history books there are but also just one of the most incredible social history books because he saw things that because he was foreign he was able to go places that not even Japanese people were able to go so the stuff in this book a lot of the time is stuff that even Japanese people didn't know back in the day and they lived there it, it, it's incredible and, it, and, and I love that it. it's all just observations so it's what he kind of saw and, and wrote, and, and it's just incredible. The Cambridge History of Japan is actually a six volume set. I've only got volume five. I have actually just bought volume six, but they're really, really expensive. Um, I've, I've read volumes one and two already, um, so I'm not that fussed about them, but three, four, five, and six I haven't read yet. Um, but they're really, really expensive, so I put them on my Amazon wish list, and then I just buy them when they come up cheap because there are ex library books do sometimes sell them really cheap but they're so expensive otherwise this is a great Japanese history book if you're interested in um, Japanese history um, or you know feminist history um, this sanctuary in Japan they were uh, like a, a convent um, uh, the Zen sanctuary of purple robes and they helped women who wanted to get divorces from their husband they would like take them in and turn them into nuns and protect them basically which was mad because you know even nowadays in japan divorces is not a great thing sort of socially speaking people don't like it a lot of this stuff is obviously like asian history because obviously then we got like books on hiroshima and nagasaki um a bit more victorian cultural history um but then we go into like North Korean history here. Um, these two books are two of the most like incredible books on North Korea. If you like sort of dry, factual stuff, uh, this is a, another great kind of social, um, cultural history book. But yeah, this is obviously when um, from all oh, about Kim Jong Il, who's obviously now dead and, and not really important to anyone. But this is a really funny book about his obsession with films. 
Kim Jong Il, the the old leader, was obsessed with Hollywood and and films and filmmaking, um, and he would like um, kidnap filmmakers and stuff. He's um, but and this is all about his obsession with films, uh, and, and it's really quite interesting the way you know he he hates. Well, you know, they proposed to hate the West and all the rest of it, but he was obsessed with Hollywood. Um, yeah, otherwise, uh, the new emperor's Mao and Deng, so it's like Chinese history, Silk Road's kind of, I suppose, East to West history, a um, bit more Japanese history. Primo Levi, if this is a man and the truce. Now, this book, if you only ever read one book about uh, Auschwitz and the... the Holocaust, I would say make it this one. It, it It's written by an Italian guy called Primo Levi, um, and he he was spent years in Auschwitz um, and survived and wrote this. He's an incredible writer, and he writes this book. This book is amazing. He writes it with such compassion, and I don't, it's just incredible the way he writes this book. There's not a trace of... Uh, sort of bitterness or anger or anything he just writes it's just incredible it's, it's really something I remember when I read this book and I, I spent about two weeks afterwards just thinking nothing in this world is a problem compared to what you know people were out had to go through um, it's, it's a really eye-opening book it's, it's incredible um, so I, I, I would say if you only ever read like one uh, book about or two technically because it's technically two books but they, they most most people just release it in one now because if this is a man and the truce and and if this is a man i think it's the first part where he's in auschwitz and the truth is the truce is basically him getting home because his his actual trip home was it took years um <laughs> because they didn't they just sort of turfed them out and said find your own way home then <laughs> so um yeah uh, that, that that's, that's an incredible book this is my sack cat um that I made one summer holiday when I was bored. Uh, Female Eunuch by Jermaine Greer, obviously massive feminist book. Uh, good Hair Days, if you're interested in like fashion history, this is a really good book about um, the social history of hair, basically, and hair cutting. And, and this is quite funny in that when I first started learning Japanese, I actually had a paper dictionary, which is mad because now no one uses a paper dictionary, right? Um, which is disturbing because it shows me how long I've been learning the language for. So now that you get more into the kind of dark history stuff with this shelf, really, um, I would say like, at least half of this shelf were, were, was bought by, by, by listeners, which is amazing. Sheet music, so we'll ignore that. Hogwarts platform nine and three quarters bookmark, because obviously I'm a grown up. Uh, yeah, but a lot of this, say, this, 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 this now gets more into the dark history stuff. So, like, um, I used this book for the vampires. Uh, I used this one for Spring Hill Jack. Bunch of history stuff. That, that would be, like, Fashe, Bridget Cleary. I think I, I've got a few books on Bridget Cleary. It's Green Bicycle, if anyone remembers that episode. That was the Adam episode, if anyone remembers that. Uh, Charles Bravo, we've done that as an episode, right? I don't think I actually... I, I did read this book, but I wouldn't say it was the main book I used for that episode. Um, that's the zombie episode, The Serpent and the Rainbow by Wade Davis. And Passage of Darkness is also Wade Davis, and that went into the zombie book as well. A zombie book, a zombie episode rather. Bunch of folk stuff, folk tale stuff, which is all really, really useful for kind of like um, just reference stuff. Like when I'm writing like various episodes this has come in handy like all this kind of folk stuff and folklore stuff so this is all really really useful cock lane ghost that was uh, just just recently read that for that obviously this is going to be coming up <laughs> it's a really big um requested episode rasputin um so i've got quite a bit to read about that i think um these three are all about that kind of vibe um, inconvenient People, Mad Doctors, Lunacy, Liberty and Mad Doctors in Victorian England. That would be an interesting book. I haven't read it yet, but that will be really interesting. Um, and, and it will be going in hand with things like Bedlam and another book down here, da, 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 Life in the Victorian Asylum. These are more like reference books rather than sort of being uh, 
sort of about a specific episode. I, I think these are a, a much more reference, except from this one, which was the Nelly Butler hauntings. That's the initial, the original um, source material for that, um, with all the original interviews. Uh, that's where I got that from. But yeah, a lot of stuff this end say is more like reference stuff, like like this, like dying for Victorian medicine, um, mummies, cannibals, and vampires, and spooky archaeology, and body snatchers. This is all quite ac heavy academic writing, and it's it, and this one, outbreak, an encyclopedia of extraordinary social behaviour. These are all just kind of reference that I, I use over and over and over again, really. Last shelf, bottom shelf, I guess. So we've got more dark history stuff over here, I guess, with a couple more reference-y kind of books. Um, Social history of Edwardian and, and Victorian England. I guess I've used a lot of this for episodes, actually. This will make a really good episode when I get around to reading it. Um, it's gonna, I'm gonna use that heavily, reference that heavily um, for an episode and it's gonna be really good. Yeah, vertical plane, that was awful. A uh, lot of kind of reference, that, again that's a reference one, this is a reference one really. Uh, otherwise uh, the rest of my shelf is kind of stuff. Um, so like these are the books that I learned, used for learning Japanese, um, Japanese for busy people. I did use Genki as well but I don't have the physical copies of Genki. Uh, English grammar in use because I need to learn how to speak English. Uh, other than that, all my kind of illustrated Harry Potters, which I think are absolutely excellent, and a bunch of Dungeons and Dragons stuff. So that's pretty much my bookshelves um, and some Calvin and Hobbes. That, but yeah, so that's pretty much my bookshelves. I don't know how interesting or enlightening that was for everybody, but that's what I've got on my bookshelves, along with a bunch of toys, I guess. Anyway, thanks very much. Um, I'll see you all real soon for uh, another episode of Dark Histories. Uh, cheers. Thanks for watching.